Hello there. Uh, day five. I'm going to be talking a little bit more today because I'm going to have a rundown of what I did today and that's going to involve me chatting about the nightmare code situation I had. Uh, so first things first, what are some things we got added? Um, well, we have Sam here. Um, you may have noticed that uh, Sam's currently in a tree. Uh, I was trying to muck around with landscape settings for this project, but the person who made this scene here has saved everything as grass instead of foliage, which, if you know, Unreal Engine just means it's a time to deal with and it's all procedurally generated instead of me being able to manually edit everything, and I hate it. Um, so I'm pretty much going to quickly leave this level as soon as possible, just so I can uh, control the landscape more. Um, Sam here is now AI controlled. There are no controls there, but Sam now has like health values and different things. Um, I was originally going to be doing all of Sam's AI today, but I took a quick diversion to go do another job, which took me all day. Uh, so let's see the other job. So you may have noticed over there, we've changed up the respawn point for the map. Um, it's a bit more obvious in the, the horizon line now, which I quite like. Um, it's also a bit prettier. Um, I'll show you a bit more there closer up. You have this glowy spot down here. This is where the tutorial of the game is going to happen. As Sam just guides you and is like, hey, we can do things. Um, just going to... Uh, we've got some target dummies here. And we've got some blocks here. Um, these are so players can muck around with physics. Fireball. These blocks are actually reasonably heavy. They're about 10 kilos each. Um, so it was a good test. Explosion. Well, explosion. Ooh. Sorry, that was me. I did misclick. Apologize. Summon wind. Summon wind. Hmm, that one should have worked. Summon wind. There we go. Like I said, having a bit of a time with voice commands. I have been told a better way to do some of my passing. Uh, so we'll see if I have time to implement it. But I got told of a way which checks for the... Let me turn this off. Enough. Turn that so I can actually hear what I'm saying. Um, pretty much I got explained a way of doing it so that as opposed to it checking the first word, seeing whether or not that's what you said, checking the next word for different categories, it is checking all the words and then it's like this is the one I think it's most likely to be. That sounds pretty good but I'm running a bit short on time this jam. Um, I'm just gonna teleport back up to Sam. Return to friend. Um, and you may have noticed some music-y things happening there. So pretty much we've got some combat music in the game. That's the thing I'm gonna be explaining today because it took me most of the day. So, if you go near an object in the game that can be targeted, like these target training dummies can, these sort of drums begin playing. Uh, thanks to Ben, who did the combat sound. I don't know his surname. Ben, if you're watching this, tell me what your surname is in the Discord, if you want me to say it in a public forum. If not, give me a silly surname. That could be fun. Um, but anyway, so we've got this drum playing. These pretty much are saying there's an enemy near you. So if I walk away, it's a bit steep hill, but if I, if I sort of walk away from these uh, training dummies, it should fade away. Um, and that's not actually spatialized. That is raw code that is judging distance uh, and playing it, the, the volumes. Um, and it's more about whether or not you're in or out of combat than spatialization in this situation. So if I actually go into some combat with training dummies, target, lock on. Oh, I'm just going to turn up the volume a little bit. There we go. Do, 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 do. Uh, so I still need to work on the loop a little bit. I uh, need to adjust a couple other things. But we now have combat themes that it's only playing when you are in combat. 
Uh, and I quite like how it ramps up from the ramps up from those drums to a more combat theme. Fireball. Fireball. Lightning. Lightning. You can see the health sort of going down there. That's a, that's a new thing. Murder them all. Fireball. Summon wind. Summon storm. Ah, oh, really? Doesn't give it to me. Summon wind. I have to look at that one because some of those responses it gotten should have uh, definitely be doing it. Enough. 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 Yeah, both the lightning and the wind need to be stopped manually. That's code problem. Not much we can do about that. You notice the music stopped. There wasn't any enemies nearby. Now here's what happens if we go towards this enemy. Now this enemy is a bit more special because he'll actually fight back. I'm going to intentionally die here. I'm saying this. I'm not fucking up. I'm going to intentionally die here so you can see what the new respawn looks like and sounds like. Hello, enemy. Let's grab that drum. Still not quite happy with that transition. Uh, fireball. Fireball, 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 fireball. Target. And we are back here. We've got some nice ambient sound for the respawn area. You could see for a little bit, but uh, for the couple of seconds after you died, you can see sort of the, the hard elements of uh, where you came from. Uh, I'm going to pop back over to Sam. Return to friend. Return to friend. That one was my fault. Hey, Sam. Now, I didn't get a chance to show off the new fireball. So, the fireball now has a bit of homing to it, based off this new targeting. I don't know if this human's still here. They bug it off with their win. They're like, oh. They are still here. You see, the fireballs kind of home towards their target now. Choo 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 choo. Haha, I won by cheating and not pushing the, uh. Not saying the voice commands, but pushing the button. It just activates the spell. Alright. So that's that stuff. I want to talk about that code that was getting that combat working because it took me most of the day um, and run through it. And if you know a better way of doing this, please tell me. It's probably not the most elegant of things. Um, but let's go through it. And it might be helpful for some people if you want to make a similar code. Alright, so to begin with, we grab our combat sound cue. That's this one here. Um, and we pause it. All right, so right at the beginning of the game, we're like, it's paused, it's not playing. Um, you can also mute things and then re-increase the, the volume. Um, I may change it to that way. Um, it was set like this way so I could time stuff a little bit better, but it's kind of not working. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Excuse me. We then go, hey, set the float parameter. We'll get back to the float parameter. It knows what it did. Um, anyway, then we go and have a timeline. Timelines are really great. They're pretty much just uh, do a thing over a period of time. Uh, this code actually has two different timelines in it. 
Um, so in this case, I just use this timeline as the most basic use of it. Don't connect to any variables. I just say you're a timeline of length of a second, right? And what that's going to do is every time it begins playing, it will go for a second and then finish. This means I don't need to rely on things like event tick or whatever, which are activating every frame to consistently run code however frequently I want. Um, so we, when that one second is up, we set the fact that we're currently out of combat, that the target is, you know, they're, they're not close enough to you. Then we get, hey, get all the actors of interface that are targetable. So we go through the entire scene, hey, all those targetable actors, actors, let's get them. Now we do a for each loop with break. So we go through step by step of each of the results we've gotten from all those targetable things, and then we deal with them. So the first thing we do is we set them as the local potential target. Potential, we don't know if they're gonna be a good target or not yet. Um, we check whether they're targetable and they have the right interface. This is just another val validity check. Then we go and we grab our location and we grab their location and we check the distance between them two. Then if that distance is higher than the variable we've set, um, which in this case I believe is 2,500, yeah, 2,500 centimeters, um, then, uh, then we're in the good. Um, so that's happened. So then we set, hey, the target is in fact close enough. All right, so that variable set there. Um, we also grab another branch and we say, hey, that closeness, right? Was it closer than what our previous one has been set? Um, it's currently set to zero. So the first one you encounter will always send a new one of these. When that's true, it's like, hey, set this as the new closest thing um, or the closest uh, area and increase the volume of the music that's playing based on how close they are. So it's not quite a specialization thing, but it's more if you're fighting enemies from afar, the music's just going to be a bit less intense. It's going to be a little bit less volume, right? Um, that's a nice little dynamic touch. Then when both of these have done, we're like, hey, we found a true thing. We found a thing that is within our range of being able to be targeted. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to stop actually looking through the rest of these results that we found in the world because we've already found some that are useful to us. Um, that means this loop has been completed. When it's completed, we go like, hey, was there a target close enough? If there was at least one target that was close enough, this is set to true. Um, if there was, we went through and we checked every every possible targetable thing in the world and none of them were close enough to us, it gets set, it's, it's false, right? Um, and it's false because at the start of this loop, we set it to be false, right? So even though, um, even if it had been set true and the loop ran again, um, it still has to recheck that it's true and that's kind of a bit unoptimal, uh, but it also means that if it goes through, if the if the boolean was previously set to true, it goes through and doesn't find any um, things that are, that are targetable, it can still set like that as false. Um, I could probably also connect it up to here this false statement and setting that uh, thing is false. Um, that's fine because we've got a break here. Um, without a break, that would probably make things not work, uh, which is a problem I had earlier in the day where I say got 20 results, I would find one that was true. And then later on, as we were checking the array, we found another one, which was false. And that then set the variable to false. Um, it probably worked with the current code now though. So now, so we do that, so it's true. Um, we check, are you currently in combat? Um, this is pretty much just here so we don't re-continuously trigger the same following bits again and again and again because again, this is checking every second. We don't want to be like, oh, it's true, let's do this again. Oh, it's true, let's do this again. Oh, it's true, let's do this again. So this is make sure, hey, this is, this is that, let's do this bit once, right? So we're currently in combat. We check that's false. We're like, hey, you're not currently in combat, but you are in targetable range of something. Set that you are currently in combat, silly. Then we unpause the music and we slowly fade it in, right? I had earlier in the day, it just kind of popped in and it sounded horrible. So we slowly fade that in over duration of a second. Um, and then we go, let's go, we're like, help, let's return, go zoop, all the way back to the start of our thing and we begin it again. So we deset all of these things, we check again for the interface um, and then we're done, we go through that loop again. Now let's say hypothetically we 
didn't come across anything. Maybe you killed all the enemies. Maybe there isn't any close enough to you. Same thing it does. It's checking, hey, uh, hey, there's no enemies currently close to you. You're probably not in combat. Unselect that. Then check, hey, you out of the combat? Um, this could probably be one variable, but it was... This code was a time for me today, so I was just trying to keep everything as basic and detached from each other as possible. But hey, you're currently out of combat. That's great. Let's fade out that music. Let's have, let's do that for three seconds. Um, sorry, delay of three seconds. The reason for that is I don't want to pause this music before we've finished the fade out. Um, we set the new volume multiplier to be one. Again, it's good to be doing that afterwards. So whatever this uh, had previously been set to based on distance, we're going to return it to one. And we're going to set the float parameter to 0.3. Now, that float parameter, that was the thing I was like, we'll get to you later. That was the thing that was a pain today. Nothing else. Um, so we've gone that, we've set everything as false, and the music stopped, and we're listening again. The advantages of this code is that uh, it's super scalable. It works with however many things you have in the scene, even if it does slow down, if you've got tons and tons and tons. Um, and because it's checking very basic things, um, I, don't, I don't have to manually set anything anywhere. I don't have to manually be like, there's this is a combat area, play combat music. Um, or the player has done a specific action to combat music. Um, I do, however, do that a little bit later on. So here in our targeting system, um, We've got the, you know, this is when the player is targeting. That can be either be done by pushing an input or by saying the word target or lock on um, and things like that. Um, we get the targeting system. We're like, hey, are you currently in combat? So I check that for that Boolean, which we set from the previous thing. And then we're going to do a crossfade between two different tracks based uh, over a period of time. Um, based again, using a timeline. So this time we've got a timeline of over that goes over three seconds. And I've um, actually got a float and a float curve that is pretty much changing a float gently over time. All right, so I have a linear curve over those three seconds, increasing that float from zero to three. The advantage of this is that if I set events to happen on update instead of on finish, which was how we did it previously, they're changing every frame. So every frame we're calling the event, set the float parameter, and we're changing that float parameter to whatever it currently is. So in this case, it's going from high to lower. I do this as well in the respawn area to make the uh, light sort of ebb and flow backwards and forwards slowly. So we set this float parameter and that's constantly changing. What is this float parameter? So today I mucked around with this node here in SoundQ, crossfade by parameter, and I hate it. It's a bit of a nightmare of a node. Um, but for much you plug in however many inputs and then you set manually over here, fade in via the combat value start. So in this situation, it's okay. At zero, start fading it in. And then at the end, your end of your fade in should be five, All right? So say your fade in is uh, zero to three. That means uh, by the time you've got to 0.3 seconds, uh, or sorry, 0.3, not seconds, this is just a float. By the time you get to 0.3, that sound is now playing at 100% volume, right? And same with fade out, um, but in reverse. So uh, at around 0.6, start start fading this out down from 100, um, and then it should be faded out fully by the time we get to one. Um, this Because these are manually set, you can get situations where you cause your own problems where you're like, cool, I want to fade, I want to start at zero and fade out at one. Um, sorry, I want to start at zero and fade in at one. And then I also want to fade out from 0.5 to one. And like, you can just fuck with your own code. And I really hate this node. I don't know, definitely need to change it or update it. Um, there is a lot of better ways to do this sort of functionality, which I can talk about in the end. But oof, this is, this is not a good... <laughs> Um, and unfortunately, I ended up having to use this node because if I do say like a branch, which is just like checking a Boolean and then true, false, and then it plays whatever sound, that's going to cut very quickly between uh, your two samples and it's not going to crossfade. Um, good for some things, totally. Just not... Uh, branch is good for some audio things. 
just not for this uh, and then hey uh, then at the bottom we've got the exact same settings but for the other sound so this first sound is the drum loop it's the you know those drums doo -doo 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 that we're hearing there and then when we start we actually get into active combat like we're doing some fighting and we're not just near enemies then we slowly cross fade into that main loop um, and then we feed this cross fade parameter uh, just a float uh, and then based off its position it calculates uh, how this should sound the advantage of this is it's super granular if you're wanting to make a really long cross fade where you can actually hear this certain part of the sound for a very long time in the cross fade that's good but it's also super complicated and I'd love an easy just 50 50 fading in and out cross fade um, setting over duration like if we go back to the where was I uh, these events when I fade in the music it's just fade in over the over the course of one second what's the top volume it should get to so if i've got a situation where i don't actually want it to fade into its most like complete volume i can do that and i can change the start time so maybe i want to fade it in but that's the start of the song i don't want and i only want to fade it in a minute and a half into the song or something you could totally do that here and it's such an easy and no to work with oh my gosh um anyway that's how we got that effect of the music playing when we're around enemies um it's nice it I still needs tweaking i put way too much time into this uh and i don't think it's even given me particularly good results but i did learn a lot uh i've typically avoided trying to get parameters and booleans into the sound cue system uh and today i gave that a red hot go and i learned how to do it and when you should and shouldn't do it i would still stick by the advice i've given people before which is don't if you can avoid it um just working in blueprints is a lot easier there's a lot more options on that note uh how would you do this if you had the opportunity to um if i was like making this from scratch on a deadline how would i do this system again so what i would do i'm not gonna probably show it because that would be a bit too much work but i would set a object um around my enemies if it's a group of enemies you can put it in the middle if it's one enemy then they can have a component which is an audio output I would have that spatialized, um, but spatialized in such a way that the curve is, if you're near them, then it's playing at 100% volume. And then only when you sort of get further away does it sort of start dropping from that 100% down. And there's a very large inner circle um, of perhaps pure audio where it's not being spatialized. Because you can use spatialization to give effects to 2D sounds like that um, without saving yourself a bunch of this code um so you can do that right and that solves me from checking things i don't have to scan for distance um it, i do have to manually set that but if i set those variables in the enemy type then that's just gonna work uh in regards to like mixing the two kind of files so i've got this combat sound cue i've got this drum loop i'm sorry and i want to fade into this node um i would probably have them as two different sound cues or two different sound files and then i would just manually adjust the volumes of both i would just be use a timeline or something and you know set one of their volumes or even you know the fade in fade out note four set one to fade out as the at the same time the other one is fading in and you get that same effect and just save it so much problems um so yeah that's how i'd recommend doing it um not a whole lot to say for uh, East Cub with friends today, um, mostly because that code was a time. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I get to do some AI stuff. I really want to get Sam up and working and sort of wandering around and falling, leading the play to do things. Um, because the, uh, I think they're neat and I think that's a really core cool part of the game. Like we've shown conversation systems and things so far. And I think without Sam sort of running around and doing combat and doing other things and interacting with the player, um, it would be a very different experience. Like I can do cheats where Sam just teleports to each next location the game's going to have an event in and just does some basics up there, but I really want them animated and having some basic AI logic. The other problem is that uh, uh, tomorrow I also need to start writing all of Sam's dialogue because the following day I've got planned to get the voice actor in to record things. 
So it might be tight. Might have to wait until the voice acting is done for the AI. But uh, don't really want to do that. So we'll see how things go. All right. Thanks for watching a long video. I'll return to the normal format tomorrow of just me showing you the features that have been added. But uh, I really wanted to talk through that code in depth and get people's opinions on it and how I can make it better. So thanks. Bye.